second software that we're going to use is called Sage Math. So let's go for that. <clears throat> so there's a few different ways of using Sage Math. At least one of them should work for you. So the simplest one, which is analogous to Magma Calculator, is to open the Sage Math cell here on the front page. There you go. So here uh, we have some code that we can write here. Let's create a sequence of elements whose entries are the squares of integers. There you go. Of course, this is a little bit slow uh, because it's not on our computer, but nevertheless, it's pretty good. Shift Enter will also do the trick of evaluating. All right. Now we can also do, for example, here, create a polynomial ring. Some things here are built in. So, for example, QQ will be the rational field already. And the syntax is slightly different. This is now a polynomial ring over the rationals. This is a univariate polynomial ring. And I want to define, for example, a cubic invariant ring. So let's find its roots. Now it says there are no roots, which is correct. There are no rational roots for this cubic. And what it will always do is that it will try to find roots in the base field. So it will search for rational roots. But you can change this. <clears throat> let's look at what CC does. Like QQ, CC is reserved for the complex field. So it has some finite precision. Uh, in fact, I don't want to use this precision, so I will say 100 bits of precision. We will learn about these things as we go along. Let's now find the roots of F within the complex field. There you go, it says it's a little bit uh, a lot to read here, so one of the rules is minus 0 0.68. The second entry is always the multiplicity of that root. The other root is a complex conjugate pair, and both of them appear as multiplicity 1. <clears throat> okay, so this is the Sage Math cell. And basically, any of you should be able to use it, so it just runs in a browser. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. This is the CoCalc Sage worksheet. This is excellent, in fact. Uh, well, all right, let me open this in a clean browser. So this was CoCalc. So if you have never opened CoCalc before, you should see this page. Then there's a button say, that says run CoCalc now. Okay, so it might take a few seconds for this page to come up, depending on the browser that you're using. But now, in the end, you should hit this screen. So now we want to use Sage. So I click on this button. And you see something like the Sage calculator. In fact, we can do something similar. Shift Enter will again run this command. As you see, the first time you run the commands, it will take a long time. It's starting the server, basically. It's trying to start the kernel. OK, so the command is there. Now the good thing is that I can chain, of course, different commands. I can see what I've written. So this, uh, I can work with different cells like this and then change only some of the cells. Run, for example, I can make a change here. Run only this cell. The first cell is unchanged and it's not run. Of course, it's much more convenient to work like this. <clears throat> so let me close this and let's the documentation is here, and I would recommend that you start with a tutorial 
so that you know the basic loop command and so on. Now I showed you two ways to use SageMath. One of them is through SageMath cell, the other one is CoCalc. The other way is to install it into your computer. So once you've installed it in your computer, there are then additional ways to use it. Now, if you're using Windows, the best way would be just to, I think the best way would be just to use the version on the browser. But if you have a powerful computer, you might want to download the binaries. So the binaries from any one of these mirrors. So the binaries are just an executable. You click on it, it will run on your computer. It's not as flexible as the original one to download, let's say for Linux or Mac, uh, but it's, uh, it's pretty good. For Linux, you just download, don't download the binary, uh, find it in your, in your package manager, and then download it through your package manager. This I think you can handle if you're using Linux. If you're using Mac, then uh, you basically have to use something like Homebrew. It's highly recommended. So if you have Homebrew, then I suggest you go and type this command, brew install cask sage. And then, or you can just search for homebrew sage, and then it will, you'll find this web page. It will take hours uh, for this installation to conclude. The same goes for the Linux people. Uh, so it's a giant piece of software. It has not been especially optimized for installation. And this brings me to another key feature of Sage. It's actually built by the community, one could say. That's why it's free. You can make changes to it. You can read everyone's code. And um, it's basically a free replacement, more or less, for software like Mathematica. So you might know this one. And you can plot functions. You can do calculus. You can do algebra. Uh, it's highly versatile. So let's suppose you've installed it, and I'll show you how it works after installation. So you can write sage, and it should tell, open up a command line. The rest is as usual. You can do this, just this. So as you see, the semicolon is used to separate commands, and if your command is not the output, it, it will not show anything. But by convention, without the semicolon, the output is displayed. And then this was as, as usual. You can just uh, type the commands as you would in the cells in the browser. So the commands are the same. Uh, this is convenient to use if you're if you're comfortable in the shell, but possibly the way, best way to use it out of all ways is to use Jupyter. So your Sage will typically come with Jupyter installed. So I've opened a folder with some of my older work. And now here I will write, not sage, but sage slash slash dash slash notebook equal Jupyter. Now if I do this, it will show the folder that I opened sage together with the files in it. For example, I have a file called LMH, LMHS. So the good thing about this is that it will, it, it works similar to the one in the browser. You have syntax highlighting, so you can see what's text, what is a number, that kind of thing. But what's great, and the browser version will also have this, you, it will remember the output of uh, your previous runs of this notebook. So that's great. So I've run this thing long, long time ago, but I can still see the output. And let's go back to the previous tab in my browser. And I can, of course, create a new Sage notebook and title it. 
So now I can do whatever I want. You manage to install Jupyter, you manage to install Sage, and you get to this point, then I think you have the nicest setup. In fact, with this setup, you can also use Magma Free Calculator uh, from this. There's a command for this, but I'll show this to you later on. An important point is to shut down the Jupyter Notebook. You can just shut down the tabs as usual, and then go back to your terminal, and then kill the kernel just by hitting Ctrl C, for example. Let's do this again. So either you can hit quit here, and that will kill the kernel itself, or if you forget and just shut down the tab, go back to your terminal, hit Ctrl C, it will ask for approval, and it will shut down uh, any kernels that are still running.